I'm going to briefly respond to another question that I got via email, which uh, goes like this. Have you heard of uh, very low carb or low carb causing a type of insulin resistance? And if yes, any thoughts? Well, um, Albert, the answer is yes. I've heard of it um, and I also read a couple of papers which kind of hint about this mechanism. Um, I don't know of any study that would investigate this on purpose though. And if any of you watching uh, this video know of any study, please link it in the comments below. Okay, um, so physiologic insulin resistance induced by a low carbohydrate or very low carbohydrate diet could make sense in light of the evolutionary argument or um, to be more specific how an organism responds to stimuli from the environment uh, we're talking about stimulus and adaptation here now uh, in this case adhering or uh, remaining on a low carbohydrate diet or a ketogenic diet strictly for a long period of time could lead to physiologic insulin resistance through many possible factors. Uh, to exemplify, one of them would be uh, the down regulation of different GLUT receptors or GLUT receptors. GLUT, uh, which are responsible for transporting glucose inside cells. Uh, because glucose is not provided through the diet as much as it is under a moderate or higher carbohydrate diet, the activity of these um, GLUT receptors may not be as in uh, higher demand. Now, following this rationale, the body adapts to its environment. Uh, why would it maintain the transcription of genes responsible for GLUT receptor proteins uh, if there is not as much need of them? For metabolic efficiency, I suspect it would adapt by upregulating factors that have to do or uh, that support fat metabolism since fat would be the primary metabolic uh, substrate for energy in this case. Now, this example of downregulating GLUT receptors is only one of the possible mechanisms that could promote diet-induced uh, physiologic insulin resistance. Uh, okay, so if this really happens, is it a bad thing? Um, I guess it depends on how you look at it. In part, it would promote metabolic inflexibility and uh, more reliance on a primary substrate fat in this case than glucose for the bulk of energy but i think that the same could be said um, if one would follow a higher carbohydrate very low fat diet over the long term now uh, what's the takeaway um, I don't know if there should be a takeaway message from this. Uh, rather, I try to view things con contextually. Um, and I think healthy people could experiment with different variations uh, of macronutrient partitioning. This way, they kind of, uh, they would avoid the boredom of monotonic diets and they could promote uh, metabolic flexibility, if I could put it that way. Uh, but some people actually like this type of boredom, um, as in eating the same foods every day. Now, whether this is good or not, it probably boils down to the individual and their unique uh, way of living. Now, what about unhealthy people? Now, first of all, I don't think there, that uh, everyone should be doing the same thing, following the same diet, exercising protocols, and so on. And this is even more important when there is an um, underlying disease. Now, as boring as it may sound, this would require an individual approach 
making sure to consider as many unique variables as possible from that person's life. All right, so uh, we'll stop here with this video. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you found it helpful. Thank you for watching.